This is this is a okay. This is the rule now for. This is Jagannath Prashad from San Francisco Jagannath Temple, Rakhine. I'm giving my text to us. That's how you like to do it. And some tradition. Good name is that for the bad one. Okay. Okay. The third house is good for enterprise. What are the third house? What are the things ruled by the third house? So let's see all of them. Enterprise. What else? Communications. Good. Short journeys. Writing. 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 Good. What else? Siblings. Siblings. What kinds of siblings? Producing siblings. I mean, no. Hmm. Communication. Using computers for email. What else? What else? Uh, like business agreements on some level, like they yes. try to make a business agreement. Business agreements. Yeah. What else? That's also communication, really. Courage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pardon? Courage. Enterprise. Transportation. Journeys. Applying for jobs. Pardon? Applications for jobs. Communication. Mm-hmm. What else? Something very vital you are all missing. Guru Upadesha. Guru Upadesha. Third house. Don't miss that next time. See, see where your mind is. See where your consciousness is. See for yourself. Communication, enterprise, uh, journey, coming agreement. Every, uh, Guru Upadesha. What happened to that? Next time, I miss a spiritual point. Believe me, I'll grind you on the basics. Okay? So, it aspects the ninth house. That is why. Why is it Guru Padesha? Because third, a planet in the third house is going to look at the ninth house of the Guru. Am I, am I clear on this issue? Right. So people who belong to a lineage, people who belong to a lineage must have this house very strong. Preferably third house must be connected to fifth house of mantra. If you decide that this lineage is going to be my life, I will spend my whole life with the lineage then your D10 must also show the third house as an important factor. Okay? The planet in the third house will show the Shakti which is pulling you to that lineage. Now, I am talking of Dashamsha, of very spiritual people, of people who have dedicated their life to a spiritual path, to a religious path, They are a complete different breed of people. So the third house we are going to look at very carefully. Clear? Now, in this few charts that I am doing now, is this Kanchi lineage. What is Kanchi lineage? Kanchi Shankaracharya lineage. Right? There is Shankaracharya lineage over there. Chandra Shekhar, the late Chandra Shekhar Saraswati was the head of the lineage. Which planet is in the third house? Jupiter, Mars and Venus. Jupiter, Mars and Venus is there, right? His lagna was Simha lagna, Leo lagna in the Rashi chart. If I am right, that is right. This is Leo lagna. So who is the lord of the tenth house of the Rashi chart? Mars. Venus. Simha lagna ka tenth lord kona? Leo. The so tenth house is Taurus. Tenth house is Taurus, right? So Lord is Venus. Remember the same principle that we have used till now. I am not giving a new rule. The same tenth Lord I am seeing in which house it is. It is in the third house over here. 
and it is a benefic planet Venus Venus is Tripura actually Lalita very specifically Lalita not Tripura Tripura will be more Mercury Venus ok what is the name of the deity of the Kanchilinis the Shakti over there they have the temple they, they meditate and she gives the name of the person uh, who is to come Sharda Sharda very specifically Sharda yeah. it's a Tripura Sundari form it's more Lalita they do Lalita Sahasrana yeah. so it's a Venus it's a Devi Shakti ok keep Venus in mind now because from one chart we have got Venus the tenth lord of the Rashi chart is in the third house in the Dashamsha Venus and it is with Jupiter and Mars now do you see the combination that made him he became the Shankaracharya of the lineage ok now see his successor his successor over here is Jayendra Saraswati Jayendra Saraswati is Lagna you can see ascendant Capricorn ok so the tenth lord is again Venus of the Rashi chart. Again it is Venus. And where is Venus placed over here? In the Dashamsha? In the third house. Look at that. Isn't it awesome? You saw that? Good. So now you know that this Venus is the Shakti by which this lineage is going to stay. It is going to be comfortable have a great reputation or a bad reputation. So, depending upon the quality of Venus, this particular person or that particular Shankaracharya or this Shankaracharya will have a great reputation for the lineage or a bad reputation for the lineage. Is that Venus beautiful or not? Look at Dashamsa carefully. It's not bad. This is Jupiter. Right? And it's with Mars also. So what is the Venus asking over there? Mars means bachelor. So Brahmacharya is wanted. And Jupiter, the blessings of the Guru are completely there. He had an impeccable reputation. He was considered nothing but Shiva himself. Supremely brilliant. His brilliance was unmatched, Shankara, Chandra Shekhar. He has got embroiled in a sort of a controversy. Jandra Saraswati and there is charges against him and there is a case going on in Chennai and uh, all kinds of allegations and things like that and the attack was by a lady mm -hmm. a lady attacked him the chief minister was a lady who attacked him look at that <coughs> Venus that Venus is in Capricorn do you see that? Yeah. Yeah. it's aspected by Rahu it's aspected by Shani It's completely like a cursed Venus, is it not? Like a cursed Venus in the detail. So it is very important that this 10th Lord of the Rashi chart must be strong in the detail. If it is weak, afflicted and eclipsed, then during the dashas of such planets that are aspecting, eclipsing, troubling, the person will be subject to serious trouble. It's very interesting, no? Okay, next. Let's go. The next person in the lineage, after Jayendra Saraswati, the next one in the lineage is Vijendra Saraswati. His next successor. Right? I am showing three people in a lineage one after the other now in this what is the lagna? Virgo ok which is the tenth lord? Mercury ok where is Mercury? in the third house again again third house with whom? Venus again Venus but there is a problem of Saturn over there but in any case, this Venus with Mercury is much better. Okay? 
So what is the answer to them? You want the lineage to be strong? You want the lineage to continue well? What do you have to do? The Devi who has established the Shakti Pitha which is there in the Kanchi must be propitiated. She, she is not happy. It's obvious. Interesting, right? Okay. Can they get a woman head? Can they get a woman? Yeah, to have the lineage? No. It's completely Brahmacharya. Mm-hmm. What is it? Woman cannot even enter certain areas. Not allowed. Even the thought of contact is not good. The woman is a separate this thing. They have a separate line. That's why they all go to Sharda Mat. Where I went into Pakistan. Okay. So it is evident that the followers of a lineage must have the tenth lord of D1 chart associated with the third house in the D10 chart. Is it not clear? Okay. To guide them. The, the, the basic point is the Guru Upadesha which has come has been going on for centuries that Guru Upadesha must continue and it continues through the three nine axis and the third house is the focal point for that all of them, all the three charts we saw just now are only parts of the chain they are different links in the chain they don't start something there are people who have started a new mission or a new organization or started something new. They are only following that which is there. Prabhupada started something new. The Hare Krishna mission. Hare Krishna mission was not there before him. Am I clear on that? Okay. Next. Now. The fifth house indicates the sun. Now I am coming to a different way of thinking. The fifth house is like Leo, which is the fifth house of the natural zodiac. (coughs) Right? And uh, it is like Leo, it has the energy of the sun. And uh, what is the tendency of the sun? The tendency of the sun is to walk alone. He walks alone. He does not need anybody. Does the sun need my help to rise or to set? He rises on his own, walks through the day, sets on his own. He walks alone. He is called the wandering monk. Sun is called the wandering monk. He is the rishi of the rishis. All the maharishis have only one seat in his chariot. There are a thousand rishis. That's a figurative term. In fact, every rishi only is nothing but a part of the sun's chariot. They sit on his chariot and they go round and round and round. The basic point is, he is a wanderer. He cannot be at one place. If he is at one place, the other places will go without light and life. So he has to go round and he has to give without question. So he cannot stay at one place. Nobody can hold him. That is the nature of the fifth house. It is very important for teaching Vedanta. For teaching Vedanta, the fifth house is very crucial. Jainini says, Surya in the fifth house from Karakamsha. He is a Vedanta scholar. That is the power of that sun, the fifth house. Okay? And normally this fifth house has to be very strong in the charts of spiritualists. Very strong fifth house. The peculiarity about the fifth house I will tell you. When you say you want to start a mission, you want to start a mart, you want to start an organization, you want to start something, what does it imply? It means that there must be a building, right? There must be a place where people will sit, where people, like an ashram, it is a fourth house function. Ashram, building, home, property is all fourth house function. And it is the, it is, there is a gandalta between fourth house and fifth house of the natural zodiac. Between Cancer and Leo, there is a very big Gandanta. These two cannot merge. It's like bringing fire and water together. This is absurd. One of them will go. So when a very 
powerful son has to establish then a mark or a thing like that, he will use his own energies to establish it and then leave. For it to continue. He finishes his project and goes. That is the power of the fifth house. What happens if the tenth lord of the Rashi chart, which is Narayan himself, is placed in the fifth house? What happens if such a person is told, you have to be the head and the messiah of the world? What will such a person do? He will say, nonsense. Spirituality is an individual path. If I have to reach God, I will go alone to God. You will go alone to God. You will go alone to God. Why? Because he believes in the path of the sun. He is talking about going alone. I cannot go to God with you. I can. You see the point? It's a very personal path. It's You die, you are, you are born alone, you will die alone. This is the truth which he has. And this is what happened in the case of Jiddu Krishnamurti. Jiddu Krishnamurti is the Capricorn Lagra. So what is his tenth law? Venus. Where is Venus in this chart? In the Dasabsha. It's in the fifth house. So, he was set, they, they started this thing called the, in California only I think they did it, is it? They made him the uh, Messiah. They called him the Messiah, the Avatar. You are the Avatar, you are Krishna reborn. He studied the whole thing. And the, just barely a few days before he was to be declared the Messiah of the world, he said, nothing doing, shut down this whole thing. The, the, the some star project, what star project they called it, the way of, uh, he completely shut it down. He shut down the whole thing. I mean, he was at the peak. The, you, he was to be worshipped like a god for the rest of his life. He said, no, this is wrong. Who can say, no, this is wrong? And throw everything away. All that power and position and everything. Only a one who has it in the fifth house of knowledge. For him, he has the power and the strength to throw it away and walk the path which he thinks is right. When the tenth lord of the Rashi chart is in the fifth house, you have the courage and the conviction like that of the sun. You will not stray from the path of truth. Sooner or later you will, even if you go little, you will come back. So it is the sun's power that you have. The Gayatri Mantra becomes highly auspicious for you. Okay, did you understand what I was trying to say about this? That means, when it is in the fifth house, don't force fourth house on these people. If you try to put fourth house on them, they will throw it and walk away. So do you see how it is? Yeah. Okay, next chapter. Interesting, no? How, how you are seeing it develop? Do you see in both cases? Okay, now here. Third house also deals with communications and travel. This is the chart of Rajiv Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India. Look at the Rashi chart. It's the Simha Lagna, right? And the tenth lord in the Simha Lagna is Venus, right? And if you see the Dashamsa chart, that Venus is in third house. So third house can give him communications, it can give him travels, journeys. What else can it give him? Writing. Plus it can give Guru Upadesha. So many options are there for him, right? But in any case, is politics an option over there in third house? No. Politics is not an option in the third house. Raj Yoga is not in third house option. Are we clear on this matter? So, what did Rajiv Gandhi do? He kicked the lineage of his mother. He kicked the lineage of his mother. That is the Raj Yoga. And he said, I am going to be an airline pilot. So, he went on to be an airline pilot. So everybody was shocked. Indira Gandhi's son, Indira Gandhi's son, elder son, is becoming a pilot for Air India. I mean, come on. They could have built about 10 20 factories for him if they wanted. I mean, he didn't have to do all this. He's got tons of everything. But he decided, no. I am going to be an airline pilot and I'm going to fly all over the world. I'm going to see all over the world. That's what he did. He said, I don't care, man. 
I don't care. It's your problem, not mine. It's your politics. Keep it to yourself. Look at that Venus in the third house. And that Venus got more beautifully activated, so he found a beautiful lady in one of his trips, fell in love with her, got married to her also. The mom said, what? You're marrying a foreigner? I mean, they were thinking you have to become the next Prime Minister of India and Indians are a bit orthodox and you're supposed to marry an a Indian girl and it has to be arranged marriage, that thing has to be done. Some 20,000 people will come and eat and go. It will all be over the newspapers. You know, then, then only it's a proper Indian marriage ready for a political launch. You can go to that. <laughs> this is important. We got to understand the importance of the Tenth Lord. You see, it compels you to do a certain kind of karma. You can't deny it. It's like God. You feel you find God over there, you find Narayan over there. So you got to go to God. Who 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 the hell is mom and dad and everybody? Everybody go to hell. This is my work area. See that? How it worked in his chart. And then one day the Dasha changed. And this Rahu Dasha came. And who is Rahu over here? Rahu is the dispositor of Venus. Right? And he's sitting in the second house from Venus. Remember the rule that I told you? The second house from this planet is a maraka. Is horrible. Is a maraka. Don't listen to that house. It will torture you. It can even kill you. Remember the rule I taught just now? Tiny, I told you it's a tiny little rule from my tradition. You won't find it in any book. Second, firstly, tenth lord in the Rashi chart, you won't find in what I'm teaching out here, you won't find in any book anywhere. So what you got, you got it. Second thing I taught you, the second from this, make a note of it, you won't get it in a book. Okay? So what is, what is no planet in that house? Good, no. Nobody is going out of the way to kick you. <laughs> I have two planets over there. Okay? And if there is a planet, he will drag you to your punishment. So it was Rahu Dasha. Rahu Dasha started and suddenly his brother, his brother died. His brother died by an accident. And after his brother's death, his mother and her said, somebody has to lead the Congress party. You are the only one. You have to come. Everybody convinced him, pushed him, put Cajoled him, this that he got to come. He was compelled by circumstances to come to politics. He got into politics, they groomed him. Then again, see how Rahu did it, huh? First, his brother died. By his brother's dying, by an accident, he was dragged into politics. Next, his mother died. Then, by mother's dying, he was forced to become the Prime Minister of India. Your mother died anywhere, met the Prime Minister of India. In Rahu Dasha, Jupiter Antar Dasha. So Jupiter is Lagna Lord over here in Lagna. Superb. And then by the time Rahu Dasha, Saturn or something came, he died. So this one Rahu Dasha killed his brother, his mother, him. I mean, do you really realize how bad this is? Clear? So next time you have a planet in the second house from your tenth lord in the D10 and you get an idea or a massive proposal or something looking fantastic, don't do it. You are better off where you are. Okay? Next. Yeah, Venus Amatya Karaka has a lot of power. So Rahu is Amatya Yes, yes, Rahu is Amatya Karaka. So it compelled him. Huh? Rahu as Amatya Karaka is very good for politics. It will drag you into politics. Ruin your reputation, ruin your sleep. He does all that. He is Amatya. If you have a minister like Rahu, why do you need friends? Right. He will do all your dirty work. Okay, so next. Okay. Changing here. Now here, 
The sixth house deals with service, pets, animals and things like that, right? Now look at this chart. In this Rashi chart, Mercury is the 10th Lord in D1, right? And it is uh, in the 11th house, in the D10 chart. Can you see that Mercury? Here. Do you think that's a good combination for someone in business? Mercury, firstly. Mercury is the Lord of the 10th house in the Rashi chart. It is placed in the 11th house in the D10 chart and it is also the Lord of the 7th and 10th houses. Is it not good for business? Mercury by himself. Superb? Good. Mercury is conjoined the moon. Now Mercury conjoined the moon by itself. Is it good for business or is it good for service? Service? Why? Why is it good for service? So, you don't do business with society? Who's going to buy your goods? No, please. People are going to buy your goods. Come on. People are there in both. Look at the lordship of the moon. Moon is the lord of the eighth house. That means as far as service is concerned, moon is retirement. Business is concerned, moon is loan, money, big loan. So, moon is supporting business or is it supporting service? Naturally, the lord of the eighth house is very important for business and very bad for service. Clear rule, right? Keep that in mind. Don't make new rules. Apply the simple rule, eighth lord is for loans and debts, which is good for business and which is bad for service. So this moon and Mercury are basically helping her in business. Helping her to start a business. Like like start up capital, start up loans, start up things, like that she'll get. Good. Rahu is also in the 8th house. I mean, it's not going to support this. Okay, anyway. So now, uh, what is the 6th law? Venus. Venus, right? And the sixth lord is in the fourth house, exalted. Exalted planets are good. Do you agree with me? Yeah. That we have realized by now. Exalted planets are superb. It's your natural ability. And so here the exalted planet is not only the lord of the sixth house of pets, but is also the dispositor of Mercury and Moon. Right? And it is exalted in the fourth house. Fourth has to do with home, property, like a property where people are like a home. So she's got a property which was converted into a home for dogs. Mm -hmm. Like a hotel for dogs. How about that? Mm -hmm. A hotel for dogs. So people going on holidays send their dogs to the hotel and the, there's a bus or that they have that goes and picks up the dogs, brings them to the hotel, keeps them, looks after them. When the parents of the dog come back, they're human parents, so the dog goes back to them. Mm -hmm. How about that? Isn't that a... And this business has flourished. She's opened two of them now. She's now expanding to more, four or five. Why is the business flourishing? The combination for business is superb. Venus, which is the lord of the sixth house. The dogs must come. If dogs don't come to your hotel, your business will go. So which planet? Venus being exalted is ensuring excellent PR. The dogs are smiling when they go back. So the people think that, hey, my dog has been looked after. So, right, they are, they are fine, they are healthy, they look after well, they got a TV in their room, they have a closed circuit thing, <laughs> they have the dog table, they have a, they have food table, everything else, yeah, proper, or whatever. She's done very well. By the way, the business started in Moon Dasha, Mercury and Kardasha. Excellent timing, right? Huh? Thumbs. She was starting and she asked me, do you think it will go? I said, of course it will go, you may. You will see within two years time, it will be fact. She's expanded, she's two. We're going to have another one in Houston now. Wow. Okay. Next task. Interesting, you see how I am giving you variety. So that, so that you see the whole spectrum of the Samsha. Third house also deals with sexuality. Right? Why? It is Mithuna Bhava. Seventh house is very good for entertainment, movies and TV. Marilyn Monroe had Mars, 10th Lord of D1. 
Now she has got cancer lagna rising in day one. And you can see that Mars. Where is that Mars placed? Third house. Now Mars is the last planet to give you mantra and upadesha and things like that. Right? Mars is a completely reverse of that. So, this Mars instead will give you the courage to go into, you know, daring enterprise. You throw your clothes in public and walk around naked, you are not afraid. Right? This is the kind of guts it will give you. I mean, a guy like me will, I, I, I won't dare to do that. Even men would shudder ten times. Like, people like me from India, well, God knows what. How can you even think of it? This one, you know, straight they'll walk away. Look at the Mars and Vishchika. In fact, torn clothes and all they will wear, which is like, like, you know, crazy. It's completely crazy. So you can see what is happening. They are, they are exhibiting themselves without any fear. This Mars in third house, being the Lord of tenth of D1. That is important. Mars is the Lord of the tenth house of D1 and is placing the third house over here in Scorpio. Firstly, that is the power it has got. Now, where is, how is Jupiter? It's in 7th house. Right? Jupiter is 7th Lord in the 7th house in Pisces in its own sign. Well placed. Do you agree? Mm-hmm. It is aspecting the 3rd house with that Mars. Her entire career, 49 to 65, when I mean she died sometime in 62 or 61, something like that she died, was during Jupiter Dasha. Mm-hmm. One Jupiter Dasha made Marilyn Monroe what she was. And Jupiter Dasha, Rahu Antar Dasha came, she died. Again, Rahu is in the twelfth house from Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Do you see how important that a strong planet in Dashamsha is? The thing is, Jupiter is aspecting the third house. And Mars, which is the tenth lord of the Rashi Shat over there. And is friendly to Mars. It's not inimical to Mars. So it promoted her like anything. Very interesting, you know, how you see that. Now, most important part that we are talking about this Mars and the... You know, the, have, have you heard of this magazine, Playboy magazine? Oh, yes. This this Playboy <laughs> magazine has, is run by a fellow called Hugh Hefner. Okay. That's what the articles told me. Yeah. And this, he started this magazine in the year 1953. And the inspiration behind this magazine was Marilyn Monroe. Yes, in the first edition, it was dedicated to her. After that, I believe it has done very well. And has stuck to this philosophy of Mars and Scorpio and Sardams. Am I clear? Am I being understood? What sort, how it does, what is your name associated with what karmas are you getting associated with? The lord of the tenth house of the Rashi chart, if it is in strength, it is in strength in Scorpio. In the D10 chart, can make you do things by which can continue beyond your death and you will always be associated with that. Am I, am I being understood? Now, keep one thing in mind. The eighth house from the Karmesha, Karmesha is tenth lord of the Rashi chart. Whichever house it is placed in, you must avoid that house. Karmesha is the lord of the tenth house of the Rashi chart. It will be placed in some house in the D10 chart. Okay? Count the houses 6, 8, and 12 from it. Tusthanas, 6, 8, and 12. In this chart, Marilyn Monroe, her tenth lord is Mars, tenth lord of Rashi chart. See the Lagna, Lagna is Cancer. Tenth lord of the Rashi chart is Mars. Where is Mars? Mars is in Scorpio. So, which are the houses that we have to put a cross over? Put a cross over sixth house, which is sixth house. <coughs> so, firstly, I had taught you, second house you put a cross, right? So, put, put a big cross over there or a double cross in this house. Then after that, 6th house, which is the 6th house, Aries. Put a double cross over Aries. Then 8th house, which is the 8th house? Gemini. Gemini. And it has sun in directional strength. 
put a circle around the sun, but put a cross over there because it is the eighth house. Okay? Twelfth house, which is the twelfth house from Mars? Second house, right? Put a cross over there. If she indulges too much in these houses or spends too much time with people related to these houses, she could be in trouble. Especially eighth house. If eighth house is the house of trouble, keep in mind. Serious trouble. What is the eighth house over here? Gemini. Which house is it from Lagna? Tenth house. Tenth house is the house of politics. Right? Tenth house is the house of the king and politics. So if Merlin Monroe had come to you for advice, what will you advise? Stay away from politicians. Stay far away from politicians and politics. Look at the previous chart. Now you go back to the previous chart of Rajiv Gandhi. Which is the tenth lord of the Rashi chart? Venus. Where is it placed? Third house. Which is the eighth house from the third house? Tenth house? So tenth house is the house of leader and politics. Stay away from politics, Rajiv Gandhi. You get into politics, you will die. Why could he not help his karma? Is that is that son in the tenth house? Yeah. Digbala. Mm-hmm. Look at Merlin Munro. Son in the tenth house in Digbala. Both Merlin Munro and Rajiv Gandhi. But when a planet is in Digbala, no, it will drag you. It will drag you. You cannot say no. Who can run away? You will drag you. You will get into it and it will finish you. Am I, am I clearly being understood on what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So for these houses, it's only for the planet there. You don't look at the ruler of those houses, do you? No, only for planet. Only for planet. Yeah, yeah. More at the sixth house is not so bad. Second and eighth houses are the worst. They are rudra bhava. Second and eighth are rudra bhava. Rudra means rudra to cry. They will make you cry. Second and eighth. If you don't want to cry in life, stay away from those things. Career, career related. People you meet in a career field, people belonging to other careers, you be be careful. There is no need. Okay. Look at Jayendra Saraswati again, third house. He got involved. He decided that he is going to involve the politicians in a big way to solve the Ayodhya issue. There was no need. You are the head. See Shankaraji. Sit and do your japa. Do Om Namah Shivaya. Do everything. What is the need to handle these politicians that to of India? Which has Rahu in exalted and Taurus Lagna. What will happen to you over that? Okay. Next chat. Did you get the points that I am saying? I want to drive home certain points. Elizabeth Taylor, my favorite. The seventh house is again to be seen. Now, here, what is the lagna? Scorpio is the lagna. In the Rashi chart, you can see that 17 degrees, 30 minutes, Scorpio is the lagna. What is the tenth lord? Sun. Where is sun placed in this chart? Seventh house. Kama Trikona. Right? Is it conjoined the seventh lord? Seventh lord is again in seventh house. There you see, Marlin Munro had seventh lord in seventh house, and Karmesha. Karmesha means the lord of the tenth house of the Rashi chart was in Kama Trikona three, seven, and eleven. She also has seventh lord in seventh house in D10, and Karmesha of the Rashi chart is also in Kama Trikona. Also, just as Marlin Munro had this. Karmesha and 7th Lord associated with Jupiter. Here you can see this Jupiter is aspecting it. You see this? Jupiter is aspecting the 7th Lord and Sun, which is 10th Lord of the Rashi chart. Do you see these things? Now these very planets have a totally different meaning. So Merlin Munro, Elizabeth Taylor, they 
they have this similar yoga of Jupiter and the Karmesha and the Kama Trikona and the seventh lord. They will rule the house of entertainment. The house, the world of entertainment they will rule. What else can I say? I mean, as far as she is concerned, I'm she's, she's a queen. Her greatest movie was in 63 when Jupiter was in Pi Sigma Theta, but she was paid 1 million, the highest paid star ever, 1 million dollars. She was paid in 63. In 63, 1 million, I mean, can you imagine what that will be now? Take inflation and other factors into account. I'm not clear about why the seventh specifically has to do with entertainment. Why the seventh is Kama Trikona? Just Kama, just Kama. desires. Okay, okay. Which other house do you think will do, uh, deal with entertainment? Third house. The communication. Kama Trikona, Kama Trikona, based upon that. Three, seven, and eleven. Three, seven, eleven. Kama Trikona. It's desire. Business and uh, entertainment are all desire based. Okay, next. Now, next slide is an assignment. Okay. This is a list of awards that she has won. So, uh, it will be nice if you can work on the Dasha and Antar Dashas in which she won these awards and explain it from the Dasha Amsha. Interesting? Not bad, huh? Wow. And not one of them is one of the small things given by some county or something like that. Each one of them is Golden Globes and 57 Golden Laurel. Award. By the way, did you know something about Elizabeth Taylor? She started acting at the age of nine. Her whole life. Just that. She's born for that. Okay, next slide. Um, so we are looking for fame in the chart. In a D10, you don't need to have moon and Jupiter in Kendra for God's history. It's not necessary. You're looking at the Karmesha. Totally at Karmesha. Okay. See the importance of Karmesha. Today afternoon, all I'm explaining to you is the importance of the 10th Lord of the Rashi chart placed in the D10. I'm linking the Rashi and D10. See, morning I taught you the same linkage, but at a different lower level. Now I am going at a much more deeper level. I am still linking. I am not teaching you how to study the D10 chart independently. But we are doing to a large extent. Also independent study and independent thing. Now legends. How to become a legend. Here are the combinations that will help you to become a legend. First is Karmesha. First point you see is Karmesha. It is associated with one of the primary houses that deal with the career. You are going on a certain career direction. The Karmesha or Narayan must be there. If Narayan is not associated with that house, you are not going anywhere. Clear? Second, the Karmesha also associates with the sun or the Karaka, natural significator for the career path. Let us say, you want to go for politics, then Karmesha must have some association with sun. If you are going into teaching, Jupiter would be nice. If you are going into uh, acting, Mercury is very important. Okay? If you are going into, depending upon what you are going into, depending upon your line, the Karaka of that line should also be supportive with the Karmesha. Is it not? Then, Association of the Amatya Karaka shows the ability to use maximum wisdom and intelligence. You have a certain wisdom faculty and an intelligence faculty for work within your system. If Amatya Karaka is also associated, the, this will be used to the hilt. Association of Dara Karaka. Dara Karaka is the sole, sole aspect for wealth and relationship matters. If your relationship with the work and your relationship with wealth is superb, the profession will give you tremendous wealth 
and excellent relationships to reach the top. Then finally, the Lord of the Tenth House should associate favorably with Ghatika Lagna and Hora Lagna and the Lagna. Three factors. Ghatika Lagna, Hora Lagna and the Lagna. This is called the time factor. This is very crucial. We will learn more about that in the later class. Okay. Just for example, I will tell you, in this particular case of Liz Taylor, you can see HL. Do you see this HL over here? In the first house? Yeah. Right. See, this entire Raj Yoga that she has is, is in the seventh house, right? So HL is in the first house, associated Lagna, HL. This whole thing is aspecting it. Where is GL? Do you, do you find GL somewhere? Leo, right? Who is the lord of the sign? Sun. Sun was the lord of the tenth house of the Rashi chart. So GL is associating with the sun who is the lord of the 10th house of the Rashi chart and forming a part of this yoga. HL, Lagna, GL, all this fact. The complete thing is, look at that. She has that debilitated Rahu in the Lagna. How is that affecting her? Her ideals may not be very high, that's okay. <laughs> Pardon? Well, this is just her career, right? It's just career. In matters of career, she can be a bit cold-blooded. She can act if required. Next. Would that in any way indicate an addiction could affect her career? That's that right. That's right. Addiction can spoil her reputation in her career. Very good point. Rahu and Jupiter signs. Because the intelligence is getting hit. This is the chart of Bill Gates. Now you look at the chart of Bill Gates. What ninth house is, now we have talked of all houses, now we go to ninth house, right? Ninth house is very good for world affairs, vision and great enterprise. You want to do something that will affect the whole world, transform this world. You've got to have something associated with the ninth house. The magic of God must be in the ninth house. So like Andrew Foss has got, you know, he's got his, oh he's got, yes he has got it in the ninth house. So the software he made is affecting the whole world of Jyotish. It is affecting the world. Okay, do you agree? So he's seeing it in a big way. But look at this in a far more bigger way. Look at this chart. The Rashi chart, which is the 10th lord? Do you, can you see the Raj Yogas in the Rashi chart first? The 10th lord is Jupiter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, come to this chart. Jupiter is in the ninth house. Right? Mm -hmm. Jupiter is conjoined this planet. Mm -hmm. So, he will affect the entire world of computers. Ketu is computers, right? Mm -hmm. That is what he is using to work. So, the whole world will get into this Ketu that he is going to make. Okay. What is the major impact it will make to the whole world? Jupiter is lot of which houses? Twelfth house and third house? Mm -hmm. Right? Third house is communication. He will completely transform communication in the world. Completely transform. How? Tell me when do you last remember picking up a piece of paper, writing a letter, putting it into an envelope, going into a post office, putting a stamp and putting it there. Yeah. Post office is a dime. It was a time. Am I, am I being understood? Mm -hmm. Nobody uses that anymore. Email has completely, I mean, he has completely transformed the world. This man is one of the major players. What else do you see Parivartana between 12th and 9th? What is the exchange between 12th and 9th houses? What is the meaning of that? It's a very important meaning. And that to Jupiter and Mercury. Something to do with learning. Something to do with information. Twelfth house. Global information. Global information is available to you on the click of a button. As simple as that. Okay. When did Vivekananda do this? Achha, when did Ramakrishna You don't have to pick up books anymore. Tap Google. Tap type it. Press a button there. Have you seen how... I mean, Earlier, okay, you know, today while going to the library, I have on the way back, I will look up books. Flipping through books, searching the date, which year it happened. Can you, to get even a date, 
You have to spend a day to get a date. Today is just a flick of a switch. Type it in, it's there. The whole world of information and knowledge has changed because of it. The entire future learning systems will change because of this man. Why was it that he was able to do such a huge, huge impact? I gave you the example, Andrew Foss has also got Jupiter in the ninth house with Mercury. So why, why can't Andrew do what he has done? Do you know what was the main difference? Everything else is maybe the same. It is the GL, the HL factor. It is the GL and the HL factor. Where the, that is something called time, the power of time. He has the power of time on his side. He has power on his side. So now, not only did I teach you about that, which areas and how to look, I also taught you a way by which you will see the impact. Whether you are impacting a few Jyoti students, or are you impacting the whole world, like Bill Gates. Okay? Tenth house shows leader, power and king. With the karaka of the carrier, you have chosen a path. Let's say you chose a path. Let's say you choose politics. There is a karaka for politics, which is the sun. What happens if the sun is badly placed in a bad house? Like sixth house, eighth house or twelfth house. That means, when you have Raj Yoga, there will be too much of turmoil around. There will not be peace during your rulership. Do you agree with that? That means if the significator is badly placed, when you achieve, when you go in that carrier, you will find too much of trouble around. Clear? The simple rule? It's a very simple rule. Now look at this. For Raj Yoga, who is the planet? Which is the planet for Raj Yoga? That is king, power, position, political headship, president, prime minister? Sun. Sun. Now look at the chart of Evian. Where is sun placed in the D10? In the 12,000 12, Marana Karakastana. Mm-hmm. What was the most important thing that happened when he was the president? Depression. First was the depression mm-hmm. and then was the World War II. When is the peace? Mm-hmm. Did he see peace during his time? Mm-hmm. He died very right. few days before that. Is it not interesting? So the point is, see the basic point you got to understand is the 10th Lord of D1, Venus. Where is Venus over here in the 10th house? Excellent leader. When Venus is the Lord of the 10th house in the Rashi chart and is placed in the 10th house in the Dashamsha, there is a firefighter who is born who can fight any fire. He won't give up. He won't say die. He's an incorrigible fighter. He will not give up. He will never say defeat. Like Parushuram, you know, they, he, such, such people can't be defeated. So you see, this Venus is not an ordinary Venus. It has the power of Narayan with him. It's like Parushuram. So, so he's a good fighter. But the problem is with his Raj Yoga. When he gets the Raj Yoga, his son is in Marana Karthasthana, so, and the son is with Mercury in debility. That means first there was this financial turmoil. You see Mercury in WT? Financial turmoil, depression, I mean rationing of food, rationing of things. And then after that, war. But he fought and he won and he succeeded. But there was trouble during his tenure. Okay, next. I'll go through this quickly. Now look at Churchill. Churchill was the Prime Minister of England. Where is the sun in the detail? This is detail. Sixth house. Right? So when sun is in sixth house, what will you say? He will be a very good wartime prime minister. Won't you say that? When he becomes the prime minister, there should be war, then only he will be very good. Because if it is peace time, he won't be good, functional. The sun is not geared for that. The sun, the karaka, has to be geared to help you. If the karaka doesn't help you, you can't do well. 
You are not meant for it. Look at George Bush Jr. Karka Lagna in Dasham Shah, where is the sun? Look at Churchill and look at Bush. Is it not exactly the same Dasham Shah as far as sun and Lagna are concerned? So what is Bush? Bush is also a very good wartime president. His job is to fight the war. So, now I am going to reverse this question and ask you. Was it not their destiny to serve during war? It is not that they asked for war. None of them asked for war. It is not FDR who asked for war. FDR was trying to avoid war from day one. War was going on in Europe, he tried to ignore it. He was dragged into it. Right? What about Bush? See, that there is a lot of discussion about... I mean, those things, those kind of statements people say that, I mean, is it is it possible to accept that the President of America would do any damage to... Come, it's difficult for any human being to accept that Okay. See, how he is fighting is a separate issue. We are not discussing as to whether he is fighting well or not fighting well. Question is, did he start the war? Well, somebody comes and bombs your house. Are you going to sit out there and watch it? Or are you going to fight back? If you were the president, what would you do? He did exactly what you did. You would have done exactly the same thing. They smashed your buildings, so you want to fight back, so he's fighting back. Not, it's not a question of his liking or not liking. He has to fight back. But the thing is, during his tenure, it will all be war. Because it is sixth. And in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is the war sign. And Lagnesh is there too in the Shakti Yoga. Lagnesh is there, Venus in Marnakaraka is there, everything is there. Lot of other stories are going on. But the basic point, all the stories I fully accept, basic point is Sun is there. Mars is in Malakarakam, is not desirable. So in business also it is not good. That's why you see the Lord of the 10th house of the Rashi Chari is exalted over here. That is why he is, he, he is, he is like... No, it's not the business that is important. What is Mars important for? Territory. He is very good for political charts. Mars is very good for political charts. What? In a business chart is useless. How business is useless? So how, how does he become the president of the United States of the devil-gated fat in the 10,000 BC? Uh, Look very carefully. There is an exchange over here. Yes. It is, it is not, it is like this, you know. He, he has to win over one to. If Clinton was. Do you, do, you, do you think if Clinton had stood against him, he would have won? So, Bush. You think? Straight he would have won. He can't fight the moon. He can fight Saturn. So anyway. Gore is not Saturn. I mean, Gore is Mercury. Gore the enemy was not a Mercury cannot fight him. He was strong. He can't fight the moon. Clinton had come, he would have won. No chance. Not a chance. I mean I'm just talking about when you're talking of comparative, you should talk of what are you talking about? I mean what is the level? You need competitors like that. I mean, among them, he was the best. I mean, but then it was his destiny that there will be a war and that he has to fight the war. That is his destiny. Okay? Are we done? Thank you. So, very good. Thank you. And uh, you can uh, throw up some charts and uh, study them a little bit. I, you see, look at it. I'm looking at it like this. It's 6 o'clock now. Right, by the time people get home, it will get late and they are working tomorrow most of the time. Yeah. But did you all get the points, basically? So next Sunday, what I am thinking is, uh, we will start early tomorrow. I mean, next Sunday, because we will be in Karakas. It's a basic, uh, very basic thing. 
So basically we will be doing a little bit of subject and then we'll take a walk around here and then I'll be asking some questions. It's like natural learning. That's how it was taught to me also. Because when you learn it, you are a kid, when you learn karakas and things like that. So you walk around, then you ask questions. Okay, what is the karaka for that? What is the karaka for that? You know? It's like a game, we'll play that game, walking around the place. How about that? Good? Sounds good? Okay. And then again after that, every alternate class, I mean, I don't know how many Sundays I'm going to be here, but every alternate class is going to be junior, senior, junior, senior, like that. So that, so that everybody gets. Okay, thank you. So the next class, you see, this was basically invitation only. Everybody here was invited. Um, next class, I mean, if somebody really wants to come, you can bring them, but we're kind of happy with who's here right now. But then the class after, if it's advanced, it's, it's only us. That way to keep the left, you know, to keep the bar a little higher. Yeah. Because if somebody who's brand new and who doesn't know one to twelve houses turns up over here, I've had it. <laughs> Imagine somebody asking me, so why is Mercury giving accountants? Man, that's it. Okay? I don't want to deal with that when I'm doing the assumption. But it was good today. Thank you. You're transferring that to my computer. Or, or to us. Yeah, um, I need some kind of memory stick I can hold maybe one and a half TV. Mm-hmm. Did you have a copy? Did you bring the memory stick? Say again? Did you bring that big memory stick? Or go back to the house. Or just give to Sarah the memory stick. I don't know. Fuji filled it up with all things. There's about Fuji being there? No, only 837 megabytes. Okay. Okay, they put a few gigs on there, though. Two gigs on a two gigs. No, there won't be space on that.